All right, and so in this additional example, it allowed me to show how to apply the, the washer method into finding the volume of a solid that is generated by rotating a, a given region around a given axis right here. Okay, and so this video lesson here, this example here is highly recommended to be viewed after you have seen my the complete lecture or the general discussion lecture on, on, on the disk method and the, uh, and the washer method right here to find volume of a solid that is generated by rotating a, a region around a given axis. Okay, and then so let's now turn over to the, the wording description of our problem. So I'm going to turn over to my lecture note right here on the computer screen. All right, so here we are at that problem right here. So we want to find we want to find the volume that is formed by rotating about the y-axis, the region enclosed by, so we have one curve here, x equals 3y, and the other curve is x, I mean y cubed equals x, with y equal, being greater than or equal to zero. And so now I'm going to swing a little bit back and forth between our wording description here and the graphing, the, the graphing space with decimals, dot com right there so that we can see the graph. So each time I, re, I, each time I get to a curve right here, I'm going to swing but uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna swing by between the the, the, the graphing calculator and, and this wording description so that we can see what the the enclosed region is by is like. Okay, so the region is enclosed by we got one curve x equals three y, and another curve that y cubed equals x. So I keep saying curve, but you know they, they don't always have to be bent curve. But basically, what we have here is a graph and another graph. The first graph is is uh, given by that equation x equals 3y and the other graph is given by y cubed equals x. Okay, and for now you, no one needs to worry about uh, what that the y greater than or equals zero means yet. So let's quickly find out what that enclosed region is. Okay, and so now on my graphing calculator with decimals right here, the blank empty space, the, the blank uh, graphing spaces here, there's the x axis, there's the y axis. The two curves, the two graphs are here. All right, so here we go. So this bent one right here is the graph for y cubed equals x, and this straight line right here is the graph of the uh, of the equation x equals three uh, y. Okay, and so now we can see immediately that the the two curves here crosses, but they cross at uh, quite a few points. So it they crosses at that point right here. And it crosses here, and it also the two curves also crosses again here. So there are three uh, crossing points between the two curves here. And so, and so now when we're talking about the the the, the enclosed region, now they're in in this way directly right now at this instant that looking at the picture, then we have two enclosed region. There's one right here that uh, my mouse cursor is currently pointing to pointing to. And there's another one down here because these are all region that's enclosed by the, the, the two curves because the two curves are crossing each other once again. But now, so in that way, we need to look back at our wording description of the problem and, and, and find some more useful information to route our attention to some, something that's uh, better, to have a better description of the region. So now with that, that next piece of information, with y is greater than or equal to zero. This is indicating that we want the region where it's having positive y value or, the, or the at least equal to zero. But that's just saying it out mathematically, but this means that we want to pick the region that is above the x-axis. That's what y greater than or equal to zero means. Okay, so now that means I'm going to go back to decimals, and clearly speaking, the region we're looking at is uh, here. That's just now the shaded areas being just now popped out. Okay, so now clearly we can disregard all of the other details and as a matter of fact, we only need to pay attention to this uh, restricted, uh, this enclosed area that's already currently shaded here. Okay, so I'm gonna hide away all of the extra stuff like that. Okay, so this is our enclosed uh, region. And so now the problem says we want to rotate. So this same problem here, but we want to rotate around the y-axis, okay, we're rotating around the y-axis. So this time we're rotating our picture about the vertical axis like that. Okay, so now one more time back but on uh, Desmos, let's have a look at the demonstration. In 3D view, this is what the, the, the region looks like. 
Okay, so that's the region look. That's what the region looks like in 3D view. But this time, this region here shaded in blue, the same one when it was in 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 a flat 2D view, and we were having that in uh, pink color. But now we're doing that in blue color. And now observe my my demonstration here that I am going to rotate this region, but around the y-axis. And then uh, again, just like how I explained in the general discussion video lecture, then. Orientation of the, the rotation does not matter. Here we can go uh, clockwise or counterclockwise. It's, it shouldn't matter. It's still going to generate the exact same solid for us. Okay, so now I'm going to be rotating it. There we go. Now let's start observing the rotation. So now when we hit at right about halfway throughout our rotation, then this is giving me a, a clear picture of what that uh, overall solid is going to look like. The real actual solid uh, volume is here. That thin, I mean that that thin enough, but uh, but still visible part right there. But then all that here com is completely the empty space outside. And now, as we complete the the, the whole rotation, it looks like a a, a little bit of a, a a hat right here. Okay, or to me, I see it's more like a, the the inside part of a of the mushroom. Okay, but uh, anyway, you you can anyone can have so many different ways of uh, interpreting. This and uh, this uh, solid right here, all right. And then I can uh, rotate it, or maybe it let me turn that into a different view a little bit. Okay, so looking from down view or looking a little bit up. Okay, a little bit up, right there. Maybe it give a, a a better clear picture about that. But all right, and that's how it looks right there. Okay, and so. Now I am going to swing swing back to my uh, board, and I'm going to make a hand sketch of that so that we can start making planning for our work right here. Okay, and of course allow me since I'm just a, a human being like anybody else, so allow me to be not as precise in my scaling, but the, the idea should be the, the exact the same. So here's the the y-axis. Okay. And we have our region just like that, okay. And so the region here is here is how we are shading that region, okay. And uh, the x-axis is here, but this time we're not rotating around the x-axis. We are rotating this around the the y-axis. So here's the rotation and we're placing our eyes to look straight down to the rotation axis so the, the imagine that the y axis is going up like this vertically and we're looking down on that okay and the rotation goes uh, right in front of our eyes just like that okay and so now once again in that way i have done that uh, multiple times in my general discussion lecture over here the idea now is to draw a stripe through the region but perpendicular with the rotation axis right here okay and we have to make sure that our strive uh, reach reaches far enough to eventually hits to that hits and stops at that rotation axis right there so here's the, how we're drawing this that stripe right there all right so there's a stripe right there the stripe always need to be any stripe here need to be perpendicular with the rotation axis right here okay and so now in the way how I'm seeing it some part of the stripe needs to be dotted because some part of the stripe here see it from from here to here that part of the stripe need to be I mean is outside of the region so some part of the stripe is outside of the region so I'm leaving dot there to indicate okay dot it right there for indicating that it's outside and then there's some solid part right here being inside of the region okay and now as we're rotating then here's what we creating the and just like that, just like as we ha you have seen in in those video lectures that I described in a general dis discussion lecture, then as the stripe is going through the region and and crossing through the region, that's how we're creating washer. And then as the stripe is creating through it there, then there's always in this case right here when we're creating the the washer, there's always that situation where a one point on the stripe is closer, right? There's one curve is closer to the rotation axis. And there's always the other point on the stripe that hits with the boundary and, and being further away, further away from the rotation axis right here. And then the, the stripe will always cross through the, the one of the boundaries, okay, of the, 
of your the region like that. Okay, and in that re reason, in that way of how things happen, then we can have an, an outer circle and an inner circle as we're rotating it. So now our, this is how we, our cross section looks like. Okay, so we now have the washers, and looking from down view right here, our washer is being placed sideways like this, perpendicular with the vertical axis. All right, so now as another demonstration, as another uh, drawing to help our imagination right here, then these are the sideways, no longer a desk, right? But these are the sideways washer right here. Okay, so at any instant, the washer looks like that, and it has a thickness right here. It has a thickness. And then this part right here is the solid part, the solid area part where we, where, okay, and empty space is here. This is empty space right here, and the vertical axis going right through it. Okay, so we have some thickness there. All right, and so the thickness is represented by this direction right there, and we will get further into that. Okay, so that, uh, this is the thickness. That's the orientation of the thickness. Okay, so now, and on each cross section right here, allow me to draw that on the, the other board. Okay, so when we're looking down V over here, then right in front of our eyes, we will see, you know, two concentric circles, and that's why we're having what's so called a, here a washer. So concentric circle, one center here, there's going to be an outer circle and there's an inner circle. Outer circle has larger radius being capital R and an inner circle has smaller radius being lowercase letter R like that. And we will get more to that. But the picture for, of the washer in front of us here, this is only a flat 2D view from looking straight from down view right here. Okay, from, from top down, it looks like that. Empty space is in here. Okay, and so now, Again, in that same fundamental, we always going to be accumulating. So for each cross section here, on each cross section, on what we need to do here, we're going to be finding the area of the cross section, or it's a cross, we're going to take the cross section's area, multiply that with the thickness. Okay, multiply that with the thickness. And then once we multiply these two together, these two quantities, these two expressions together, we're going to obtain the volume of uh, our infinitesimally thin washer. Okay? And in a way how I'm drawing here, see, each washer here has, has a thickness. And then this is the area of the cross section, of the cross surface where our eyes is, our eyes looking down or, or seeing it. Okay? And so in that way, cross section area multiplied with thickness, that gives us the volume. And now we're going to be accumulating our volume. We're going to be accumulating all of those uh, cross sections or uh, all of those uh, washer volumes from the beginning to, or some, from some starts to an end right here. And that's how we obtain our total volume of the entire picture here. Okay, so the entire picture is going to go like this. Okay, it goes through that okay, and it goes through this. All right, and then ultimately it comes to that. All right, so now let's get to it. So I gave that advice that it's always good to first start out, even though it came out only from my personal experience. Okay, let's look for, let's recognize a thickness first. Okay, so in the way how I am seeing the, each of the disks right here, the disk in this case, right here, since we are rotating around the y-axis, so each one of our, and if I accidentally set disk, I mean, I meant the washer, okay? Or, or the puncher desk, how's that? Each washer here is a puncher desk. It has a hole in the center of the desk, okay? So anyway, so the thickness of each of our washer here, in the way how we place our washer, then it has to be the thickness is the infinitesimally small change in y value. The y axis is here, the y axis is here. So the up and down here is the small change in the y value in infinitesimally small, so we call it, it's the, we now recognize that it's the differential dy. So the thickness here is differential dy. Okay, and now once we've had thickness, then we can start revising our integral setup right here. It's accumulation. We haven't found a formula for cross section yet. Yes, let's leave it there for now. Okay, that's empty. But now thickness, I know for sure it has to be dy. 
And because thickness now is dy, and all of a sudden we realize, hey, so wait a minute, that means the d expression, the d expression in our the integral problem here is an expression is a dy. That now tells us, consequently, that in the next step, when we're looking for our cross-section area here, it needs to be expressed, the cross-section area here needs to be a function or expressed as a function in terms of y, in terms of y as the main variable. Okay, so now let's hunt for that information right here. Okay, so now, again, back in the picture, and now I'm on my work, I'm on my way to find the, the cross-section area. Okay, cross-section area. All right, so on my work here, this is how I'm seeing it. Now, you see, this, this, any stripe here in this case is uh, perpendicular with the y-axis, or it's kind of going horizontal, okay? But in the end, the length of each stripe changes. See, it's short stripe, longer stripe, right? And then the, 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 the part that's inside the region also gets short or gets long, depending on where we put our stripe and depending on depending on the y value. You see, I can see right here at this drive, we add a y value. Right there, we add a y value. And at the different y value, at a different y value, we can have a different stripe like this, at a different y value that I'm trying to draw like that. Okay, so in that way, we definitely want to rewrite our two curves here as functions in terms of y. Okay, because see, a curve just simply has any equation. Any equation can give us. I mean, this graph right here can have an equation being written in two ways, a function of x or a function of y. Okay? Or even the third way, just a general function, a general equation that relates the two variables x and y. But here we definitely want to rewrite, re-express this curve in any one of these curves here in terms of the, the y variable over here, because at any instance y that we're at right now on this y-axis, then the the length of the stripe right here gets get changed differently, okay? And this is the part that outside the region and the part inside of the region is here, okay? And so now in that way, I'm gonna move over to my other board right there, all right? I'm gonna reconstruct a different picture to make it more clear right here. All right, so in this way how we have seen it, this bent, Part of the curve right here was that uh, y cubed equals x. And this bottom part, I mean this other part right here, this straight line right here was that uh, x equals 3y. x equals 3y. Okay? So it is gladly that each one of these has already been expressed. It's just the way how the problem gives it to us. So it saves us some, some effort. Each one of the two curves here are already expressed in terms of y variable. Okay, so now allow me to redraw another picture, to draw another picture over here. Y axis is here, the stripe is going sideways. Okay, this part is outside of the, the shaded region. Okay, the shaded region is here. Okay, and we draw our stripes right through it. Okay, but now I want anyone to view it further. Again, just like any other problem right there, as the stripe is going through the, the region, the, the enclosed region, and making its way to hit the, the rotation axis, then there will be a point where the stripe crosses uh, the axis, and that crossing point will be the point where it's closer. There's always a point that's closer to the rotation axis, and there's always be a point on the other boundary, on the other boundary that's further away from the rotation axis. Rotation axis is here, so this point is further away. And this point is closer, so we have to look at the picture to tell. Okay, we have to look at the picture right there. All right, and so now, in this way right here, in this way, here's how I'm seeing it. Now, when we're rotating it to re to create our washer, then. This line right here is the outer is giving me this line right here where the, the, the stripe when, when the stripe hits to that line right here, it gives me the outer circle. Okay? And this line is expressed as a function of y, x equals 3y. So just like that area of any uh, washer here is pi times uh, big R squared because that's the area of the outer circle. 
And then now subtract pi times a little r squared. That's the area of the smaller circle. Larger circle minus the area of the smaller circle. That gives us the area between the two, of the, between the two circles. And so now that area of the bigger circle here, I can see that it's, uh, it's going to be pi times uh, 3y r squared. OK? And then now. In this case right here, I can see that the smaller, the, now we having the picture here, we having the picture here, so the, the, this graph that gives us the closer point that gives us the, the smaller area or the, the smaller circle right here is this curve, this bent curve right here. And so now, or that, that curve is the, the curve where it's closer on, on our stripe right here. That curve cross our stripe at a point closer to the rotation axis, okay? And so in that way right here, I'm seeing pi times uh, the radius here. The radius here is okay, y cubed but square because this curve right here is expressed as a, as a function of y, y cubed. x equals to y cubed. Okay, so now radius square times pi, but this is the area at any instance, the area of the inner circle at any y value. So now larger circle minus the area of the smaller circle, that's the area of any cross section, but now completely in terms of, uh, in terms of y right here. So now I'm ready to fill that into my work here. So the area, any cross section area, yes, that area is pi times uh, the 3y square, I mean 3y r square, okay? And then minus pi times uh, y cubed r square. And then we can algebraically uh, clean up that here a little bit before we successfully fill that in here. So now I'm looking at a, a common factor of pi, and here it's a 9y square minus, and here it's, I'm looking at y to the sixth power. Okay, so 9 pi as a common factor times a 9y square minus y to the sixth power. So that's how I'm filling it in right here. Okay, so now substituting the the, the cross-section area for, for all this here, including the pi constant coefficient. So now I'm looking at pi times uh, pi times uh, 9y squared minus 6y, okay? I mean minus y to the 6th power. All right, and now we have a function successfully expressed in terms of, uh, of the y variable and making it consistent with our dy right here. Okay, and so now in that way, and so now in that way, I am going to, I am going to be finding out in our next step, finding out where the two graphs is. I mean, where is the starting end and the, the ending of our accumulation, the starting and the ending of our accumulation. Okay, and so again, I have explained many times throughout my video lecture that in the way how the picture is showing. It's just the way it has to be. In the way how the picture is showing, then our, our washers are being placed horizontal, right? being placed horizontal, or per, in other words, perpendicular with the vertical axis, with the vertical y-axis, okay? So in that way, in the way we're accumulating, then we're accumulating, start has to be at the bottom. So we're starting the accumulation at the bottom, and we're stacking it up, we're stacking up the we're stacking up those washers right here from bottom up. So the ending of our accumulation is at, uh, is at the top. So from bottom to top right here, okay? So that means what? We have to find out in respect to y variable, what y, which y value corresponding to the bottom of the picture here and which y value is corresp corresponding to the, the, the top end of the picture here, okay? And so that means we have to look for, in terms of y, the crossing points of the two curves here, but in terms of y, okay? And so now in that way, I'm again gonna move over to my other board right here. And I'm gonna use, I'm gonna erase this extra work right here. And then there's another picture, of, version of my picture here. So it starts at the bottom, but we need to find that in terms of y. And it ends here as another y value. So we need to find out those two y values right there. Okay, the low, the bottom, and the high. Yeah, that's the start and the end of our accumulation. Okay, and so, and so now here's how I'm seeing it. Here's how I'm seeing it. You see, gladly the function has already been, I mean the two curves has already been, have already been expressed in terms of uh, y. So what we need here is to equate, I'm gonna equate y cubed with uh, 
3y. y cubed equals 3y. That's what it, it is. And now I produce for myself, I have just now produced for myself an equation in terms of, uh, an equation in terms of, uh, of y to solve for. OK? And so now in that way, I can just simply bring all y variable to one side, one, bring all variable terms to one side. So y cubed minus 3y equals 0. And then the next term right here, now this is not a quadratic equation, but it's, it's a polynomial equation in degree higher than 2 right here. So pretty much the only choice left for, for, left for us, quite standard, be able to factor it. Okay? And, and the, the factoring can come out here quite easily. I can see that I can factor out the common factor of y right here. So that leads to having a y in parentheses y squared minus 3 equals 0. Now, in my next step, I am going to factor again, but it's, it's not happening as, I mean, the way how I'm factoring this may not be seen as commonly as other problems, but I do recognize this as a difference of 2 squared. This is a perfect square. This is not a perfect square, but it's a square of a square root of 3. This 3 right here is a, we can purposely see that as a square of a square root of 3. So now it's a difference of two squares. Okay? Anyone arriving at this video lesson should be fluent enough or comfortable enough with algebra to, for me to make that argument right here. And you don't need to be the master of, of algebra, but you should be fluent enough to understand that argument. And so now once I see the 3 here as a square of a square root, then I can factor it further with the difference of two square. So y times a y minus square root of 3 times a y plus square root of 3. That's now how I lead to having three solutions, one of them. So now I'm going to have to rewrite that in my the little space here. Okay. So with this little space here, I'm seeing y equals 0. That's one of them, y equals 0. That's the bottom end. Okay. And then there's, a, there's a y equals positive square root of 3, and then there's a y equals negative square root of 3. So which one of these two remaining one? It's the one that for the upper one. It's positive. The problem was saying in a wording that we want y greater than or equal to 0. So now I'm going to choose this. And the problem does not work with the, the negative side of this region. See, the whole region here is completely above the x-axis. So we're just going to disregard this. We disregard that uh, solution. I'm not saying that, that, that we, we, we take it out or anything like that. We just disregard that. So now our, our ending of the integral here, our top, from bottom to top right here, then our top end of this region is a positive square root of, of 3. Okay, and so now we are ready to complete our integral setup. So back to the, the almost complete integral setup right here. Then now the accumulation. An integral is accumulation. I constantly have to remind anyone about that. An integral that we're doing is accumulation. Here we're accumulating washer volumes from the bottom up, those washers that are stacking from the bottom up. So the bottom here is 0, and the, the upside here is a positive square root of 3. Now we have successfully done with our volume, set it up as a complete integral. So the next step now is simply just to apply the fundamental theorem of calculus to find this, to find the final, to evaluate the final numerical answer for this. Uh, uh, definite integral, and, and we should be uh, arriving at the final answer. And so at this point, since I mentioned it, yes, again, this video here must be watched after you have seen uh, or have viewed my the, the video lecture on the fundamental theorem of calculus so that you can understand what the fundamental theorem of calculus is. Such a beautiful result that, that, uh, that came out for us by, by Isaac Newton. Okay, but now I'm going to go ahead and move to the other board right there and, uh, and then to, to work out with our problem. All right, so now with our curtain integral setup right here being an integral from 0 to square root of 3 pi times, uh, now I'm looking at uh, 9y squared minus y to the 6 power, okay, with a dy. Fundamental theorem of calculus says uh, we can just take the antiderivative. So now it gives me pi times uh, 3y cubed, okay, minus, and assuming also that you have already been fluent with the how to take antiderivative. And so now this y to the 6 here give me 1, 7, y to the 7. 
Now we need to evaluate the antiderivative from zero to square root of three, and this is what the, the anti I mean this is what the fundamental theorem of calculus allows us to do right there. Okay? And so now the next step is to evaluate and, and once I'm done writing down the evaluation step right here, I'm gonna quickly step away to my cal step back to my computer station to get the, the, the final numerical outcome. So now I'm looking at uh, pi times uh, three times uh, square root of three in cubed minus one seven times square root of three to the seventh power, okay? All that there is going to be subtracted. And so all that here I'm written, I have written down so far, that is the, the antiderivative evaluated at uh, square root of three, okay? And now I'm gonna subtract, uh, and again notice that each term here, each term here has a, the, the variable in it. So once we're substituting zero in that, it's all just gonna be a, a zero out term. So I don't need to do, I don't need to spend any uh, the effort to do that calculation. But now I'm gonna swing over to my board to get a calculation done for this, for this, okay? All right, so my final answer from, uh, from my uh, calculation, from my calculator on the, at the computer station here gives me uh, how about 30, 36 squared root three times pi, okay? divided by seven, and that is our final answer. Okay, so this is, ladies and gentlemen, the amount of volume, the amount of volume that, uh, that's generated by rotating this shaded area around the y-axis, around the y-axis. Okay, and so a couple of uh, checkpoints again for consistency. The answer here needs to be a positive. And yes, it was a positive that we found it here because it, once again, the problem here is that we are applying our integral in, into finding a volume. So volume needs to be a positive quantity, okay? And so the answer came out as a positive quantity. It's not even the, a zero because it, there, there, there are no, I mean, it's not fun at all to do any problem that uh, comes out with a zero volume. So that's another point to check for. So anytime that you end up, again, as a, another, advisor here, anytime you come up with a, in, in a volume problem and you come up with an answer being a negative or being a zero, you definitely want to double check with your final answer there, okay? But then if you're questioning yourself or, or if, if you're questioning me of whether I have accurately calculated w without any error, arithmetic error here, then, you know, I, there's no way for me to guarantee. It is, again, anyone's responsibility to double check or triple check with any of one of your Right, uh, arithmetic right here to make sure that uh, all those are all done correctly. And, and I myself right here, I can, you know, you gotta forgive me that in case I make any arithmetic errors here, but it should not change the, the overall structure of the problem. Okay? And so now that this particular example here is a little more special than the one I gave in the general discussion lecture in the sense that uh, we are responsible on our own to find out where the start and where the end of our accumulation is. So you see, the, back to the work right here, we had to do some algebra. We had to spend a little time to find, a, a, with, with algebra of course, to find the, the lower end and the, the, the upper end of our integral simply by solving that equation for, in, in terms of y variable here, in this particular example, in, in terms of y variable for the crossing values the, the, y value, the y value where the two graphs here cross each other, okay? And so it took some algebra that we have to solve, but that's, that's, you know, that's all it takes right here. It shouldn't be the, uh, too much of, of a challenge for anyone at, at this point right here, okay? But that's in, there are times out there where your, your region is simply just a, an enclosed region between two curves that are crossing. So we have to be, we must be responsible to, and we must be able to find the, the crossing points, either in x values or in y value to find out where the two curves uh, crosses so that we can come up with appropriate uh, starting and ending of our integral accumulation, okay?